Before we start the video guys, you can get your first month of Envato Elements for only $9 via the link below. If you've watched this channel or if you're a video editor, you probably know what Envato Elements is. It's a pretty good deal. Check it out. Every subscription helps the channel. All right, let's get into this video. And how's it going guys? Joshua Lafemi here, live from LA. And today we're gonna be talking about Adobe After Effects and just the Adobe Suite in general. So it was about 10 years ago when I switched to the Adobe Suite as my main NLE and VFX platform. It was definitely a great decision at that time. And for many years, Adobe was the best decision for post-production. Over the years though, I was curious whether or not Adobe would be able to sustain its long-held prominence in the post-production field, with several new competitors now coming in to compete in the NLE and VFX space. But surprisingly, this year, of all years, right, I've really seen some really cool new releases in both Premiere and After Effects, specifically in the AI space that has gotten me more excited than I have ever been with the Adobe Suite. Machine learning and AI, which Adobe is continuing to develop using their, it's called the Adobe Sensei project, I believe, is the future of post-production. And whether it be their auto reframing tool, their edit scene selection tool, or the Rotor Brush 2 tool, and now the all new content aware fill tool, we're gonna continue to see the development of these processes that are gonna save us time and money in our post-production workflows. On Tuesday, Adobe announced the new content aware fill tool in After Effects beta. You may have already known that there has been a CAF content aware fill tool in After Effects. It's basically the video version of the content aware fill tool in Photoshop, but now it's been completely transformed. So what's the difference between the old CAF and the new CAF? It's Adobe Sensei. The new CAF allows you to use improved AI and machine learning to remove objects that are actually moving through different lighting intensities, as opposed to before when you generally use the old CAF on objects that were lit pretty consistently. So let's check it out. All right, guys, first things first, I'm gonna show you how to install After Effects Beta. First, you click into Creative Cloud, and then you click on Beta Apps, and then you go to After Effects Beta. I have it installed, so it says open, but for you, it's probably gonna say install. So we're gonna open it. Bam, there we go. We have two incredible pieces of footage that we're going to try to use Content Aware Fill on. First things first, we're gonna use Content Aware Fill to remove this guy in the tire swing as well as his dog. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually draw a mask around him as well as his dog. I'm gonna do that by going into the pen tool. Oh, first, before that, I'm gonna click on the footage. Make sure it's clicked on, then go to the pen tool. And then we're gonna begin drawing a mask over him. It's important to make sure that the mask is big enough to in fully include him inside the mask. You don't wanna get it too right up along the outline of the subject that you're trying to remove. You want to leave a little bit, bit of space in between the mask and the person that you're removing. Then we're gonna go into the mask and then we're gonna change the mode to none just so we can see everything for now. Then we're going to keyframe the mask path. So we're gonna click on the stopwatch and we're going to just basically, let's go back to the selection tool and then we're going to keyframe the mask so it tracks. We're gonna manually track it so that it sticks on to him the entire time. All right, it's pretty good. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna now mask the dog out. When you have complex pieces of footage where you have two things or more than one thing that you're masking out or just like a, even an object that's more complex, you wanna break up your mask into different masks. So we're, instead of trying to mask everything, we're gonna mask the dog separately from the guy. We're gonna then go and we're gonna change the mask to none like we did before. We're gonna click the stopwatch and then keyframe the mask path of the dog. Let's go back to the selection tool again so it's easier to move the mask. Last thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a mask on the actual rope that's holding the tire swing up. All right, now that we have successfully masked all three objects, we're gonna to go to the individual masks and change them to subtract. Let's close that up. Let's review everything. Everything seems to be tra tracked pretty perfectly. And now we're gonna use the Content Aware Fill tool. We do that by going to Window, 
going and clicking on content aware fill and then it's going to show up on the right side fill target is going to show you the area that is being cut out and that will be replaced the alpha extension is basically telling content aware how much wiggle room it has to expand or contract those masks when it's doing the background replacement i usually like to keep it in between one and four we're going to keep it four today and then there's the fill method the fill method is very important there are three types of fill methods you can use. You can use object when you're trying to remove an object like we're doing today. You can use surface when you're trying to remove something like maybe a title from a static shot or a flat surface, like from say a building or a truck. Or you can use edge blend to remove something from a pretty smooth and non-textured surface. So again, we're gonna use object. And now we're gonna to come to lighting correction. This is where we're straying from the old content nowhere fill. This is now something that's included in the new content aware fill and you have three options. You want to always start out with strong. This is the magic behind how this new CAF allows you to remove objects from environments where the lighting is very dynamic and changing. So we want to activate it by taking it off of none and starting on strong. You want to always start on strong and if it doesn't quite work the way you want, then you go back and you dial it back to medium and then you go to weak. We're going to go to the range work area and then we're going to actually make our work area we're going to decrease our work area so it's just taking up the length of the clip there we go so we're going to leave it on work area and then we're going to finally go to generate fill layer it might take a little bit all right we're gonna have a look and look at that caf did pretty well i would say this time around you can see some of the leaves still falling through the through the removed objects. That's awesome. Quick tip I'd like to mention, let's actually blind the fill layer so you can see the masks still in all of their glory. Um, if, if it doesn't quite work out great the first time, another tip is you can actually go into the masks and actually feather them. Sometimes that can work and make the, uh, the edges a little bit less hard. I didn't really seem to have that issue this time around. I want to continue on to this next shot that I have. I have a shot of a dog running away from his owner. I'm going to show you a slight deviation. I'm going to first click on the footage and then I'm going to click on my pen tool. I'm going to draw a mask around the dog and do pretty much the same thing. None. Keyframe the mask path. Let's go over to the selection tool. Let's move the mask over. Make sure everything's perfect. Review everything, adjust. Yeah, but you wanna check out for, for places like this where the tail seems to try to sneak its way outside the mask. Go. the ears are popping out let's fix it, it kind of jumps up there we go that's pretty good okay now we're gonna go to subtract like we did last time and you would think that we're just gonna do generate layer but I want to show you something else sometimes generate fill layer does not quite give you the results that you want and what you can do in that case is you can do something called create a reference frame when you create a reference frame, it takes the exact frame that your playhead's on, it opens it up in Photoshop, and then you can use, say, the clone stamp or any other way you want to do to actually fill in the hole that you've created manually. What you then do is you save that Photoshop file, then you come back into After Effects, and then you create another reference frame a little bit ahead, and you do the exact same thing. What those two reference frames will do is it will give Content Aware Fill more of a clue in regarding what that background should actually look like when it's trying to fill in the hole that you've created when you've removed your object, like in this case, the dog. The closer together that those two reference frames are, the more accurate the fill is gonna be. So again, the more reference frames over the course of an entire clip, the more accurate your overall fill will be. All right, we're gonna do what I usually do. I usually go to the very beginning, first frame, and then I do create reference frame on that first frame. Photoshop then opens up. All right, I'm now gonna use clone stamp. Try to fill this area in. 
Let's make it a little bit smaller by clicking on the brackets. I'm going to exit out of that. I want to just show you how easy that is. I literally just saved Photoshop and I exited out, exited out of that and my reference frame was automatically created. Now you do not have to worry about this reference frame ever again. It's automatically stored into the memory of content aware fill, however they do it. Don't worry about having to do anything other than just going to your next reference frame. So let's create another reference frame right here. And then uh, let's actually create it right here. We're gonna go and create another reference frame, maybe just a second after, just a little bit more than a second after the first one. Okay, and we're gonna go to save. And then again, we're gonna just cancel out. Don't worry about anything, everything has been registered. So basically in between here, this, this reference frame and this reference frame, content aware fill is gonna have a lot more information to draw from when you compare it to like the rest of the footage. So if I was like extra on point, I would create reference frames like every second for the entire clip. But I happen to know how this clip is gonna perform as far as CAF goes, and I don't think I even needed to even do any reference frames. CAF is pretty strong, so let's just do, generate the fill layer and see how it does. All right, let's see how this looks. This looks pretty good. Now let's take a look at that tree shot one more time. Now let's take a look at the dog shot one more time. One last thing I wanted to tell you is this image sequence that makes up the fill layer, this is the layer that's actually filling in the background after you remove the image, is actually significantly lower in file size compared to how it used to be in the old CAF. The folks over at Adobe changed up the compression algorithm so that you still have the same quality regarding the image quality, but the file size is significantly lower. Guys, we're gonna end the tutorial here. Remember, you can get a first month of Envato Elements for only $9 in the link below. We've stopped doing the free month offer. That's been an offer that's been going on for about six months. It finally came to an end, but you can still get the first month for $9. Envato Elements is an amazing subscription service. I literally download stuff, whether it be stock footage, sound effects, Premiere or After Effects templates awesome fonts, text, literally every single day. Every subscription really helps the channel, so please make sure to check it out. We have so many incredible tutorials in store for you this month, so please make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you can be alerted every time we upload a new video. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and as always, remember to keep it chill.